Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing a little bit of an experiment in this Windows 7 virtual machine right here. And as you can probably tell from the title, what we're going to be trying to do is running Windows XP mode, which was a feature that uh, Microsoft introduced with Windows 7. We're going to be trying to run that in a Windows 7 virtual machine on Windows 10. So yes, I'm just kind of going to be like a virtual machine exception, if you will, as in we're going to be trying to run a virtual machine inside of another virtual machine and seeing if we can actually do it. Uh, and this is also just going to be kind of a look back at Windows XP mode. And for me personally, it's going to be my first time using it. I've never actually used it before. And it's a feature that I've actually, let me go ahead and just uh, go to the website right here. Um, it's a feature that I have actually wanted to try out for a while um, because I just thought it was a really cool feature uh, when Windows 7 first came out. And at the time I was still using a Windows Vista computer and I actually had just gotten a new Windows 7 laptop. I believe it was like 2009, 2010, uh, that you know time frame. And uh, I was really excited to try out XP mode, and basically what it is, if you don't know, is it was a feature that Microsoft, like it was a Microsoft sanctioned feature that was bundled with Windows 7 that basically provided a built-in Windows XP virtual machine uh, that you could use to run Windows XP programs in your Windows 7 environment. And it was uh, kind of created to make it easier for those people who were still on XP that wanted to kind of hop over Vista and just, you know, transition to Windows 7 uh, to give them a very easy way of actually still running some of their old uh, XP applications. So for people, you know, that were in a business environment that had, you know, proprietary software, um, you could very easily run it using Windows XP mode. And that's basically what it was designed to do. And, well, as it turns out, I was never able to actually try it out because the laptop that I got actually ran Windows 7 Home Premium, which is a version that does not support XP mode. You have to have at least Windows 7 Professional. Well, in today's video, I have a Windows 7 Professional VM here, and we're going to be trying out XP mode. And for those of you guys who have used it, you know, this will kind of be a bit of a look back on it. And for me, myself, it's going to be a first time look at it and see how it compares to a standard virtual machine. So uh, let's just jump into it. So this right here is the website that you need to go to to actually download this. Yes, Microsoft still hosts this today. Day, although I'm not sure how long they're going to uh, continue hosting it because Windows 7's uh, support actually ends in 2020, so less than a year. I believe it's in uh, April or you know sometime around early 2020 is when uh, the official support for Windows 7 is going to end. It's going to be no more, and uh, you're going to have to update if you want to still get updates from Microsoft. Um, you know, it's either Windows 8 or Windows 10. Uh, but yes, right now it, it is still supported, so you can still download uh, XP mode from Microsoft's website. And once you download it, let me just go into uh, my downloads folder right here. It comes in this uh, 469 megabyte installation file, and we're just going to go ahead and run it here. Now, I do believe that uh, you have to have um, a Microsoft Virtual PC installed, or as it's called in Windows 7 here, Windows Virtual PC, but we're going to see if XP mode actually asks us for it. We're just going to go ahead and press next here. We're going to install it to our standard, you know, just the standard directory that it wants to install it to. So you see what it does is, and this is what kind of makes this unique as opposed to something like Microsoft Virtual PC or VMware, is that it's not only installing a virtualized environment for you to use Windows XP, but it's also installing a actual virtual hard disk file. Okay, so the Windows XP mode itself has actually installed, but all it does is it actually creates a folder under uh, you know, C program files, and it actually has a virtual hard disk file in here along with a key. It literally has a Windows XP product key in here as well as the EULA for Windows XP mode right here. And uh, yeah, so there's there's no actual like executable. So what you have to do is actually download a Windows Virtual PC. So we're gonna go ahead and just download that. And uh, Windows Virtual PC, if you don't know, was actually a specialized version of uh, Virtual PC. We're just gonna go ahead and hit yes here to install it. Um, this was actually created specifically for Windows 7. Now, Microsoft did have their own virtual machine software. It was called Microsoft Virtual PC. Uh, the latest version was 2007 before they changed the name to Windows Virtual PC. 
And that was actually the first virtual machine software that I ever used was Virtual PC 2007. That's actually when I started to get into, you know, operating systems and virtual machines and actually running them on my computer. Okay, so the installer has finished up here. We're just going to go ahead and press restart now to actually restart the machine. All right, so we are back and the installer has actually just finished up here. It has actually restarted the machine. And now when we go into the start menu, you can see we have a new uh, icon for Windows Virtual PC. We're just gonna go ahead and run it here. And uh, it actually opens up in File Explorer. There's actually not a like dedicated program window that you actually open up kind of like how uh, Microsoft Virtual PC was with like the Virtual PC console and everything. This one literally adds a new uh, library to your libraries folder called Virtual Machines. And that is basically it. So I believe um, there might be a shortcut for XP mode. Yes, there it is. So there's a shortcut for Windows XP mode in the Virtual PC folder. It opens up a very standard looking uh, license agreement panel. And one thing that I do like about this version of Virtual PC is it's really integrated with the operating system as a whole. It's, it doesn't really feel like it's a separate program. It feels more like just a feature um, rather than a separate program. And that's one thing that I definitely feel Microsoft was going for here, which is a very, very cool you know, change you know, from what they used to do with this you know with the older version of virtual pc and now it's actually going to um ask you to set up a username which it actually just uh, has xpm user for xp mode user and it asks you to type in a password and it can also remember the password for you so we'll just type in um lol as the password i think that that's what we did in the uh, hannah montana linux video and it asks you to um, specify an installation folder which is um, going to be an app data local microsoft windows you know this whole string here and it's going to save it in uh, virtual uh, windows virtual pc virtual machines so that looks good we're gonna go ahead and just hit next and it's going to ask you if you want to help protect your computer as in the windows xp computer with automatic updates this was obviously created before support for xp ended so they did still push out updates we'll just say yes why not because um, it might still have some updates that it could download and uh, now it's going to uh, kind of let you know about sharing the drive. So it's basically kind of letting you know that it's going to kind of be linked. So it's not going to be so much like a separate virtual environment. It's going to actually link the hard drives together to make it easier for you to install programs. And I believe you can also like run XP programs from the start menu as if they were a standard Windows 7 program and it will launch like any other regular program. So we're going to actually be trying that out with some XP software and seeing uh, how it works. Because again, I've never actually used this before. This is my first time. So we're going to just uh, press start setup right here. And I believe it will actually just set everything up for us. It's not going to have to, you know, have us go through like a installation process. I believe this actually will you know set this up automatically for us with those uh, credentials that we supplied okay so we have just finished the setup for uh, windows xp mode and windows virtual pc right here and you can see that uh, it actually does open up in a dedicated window so we have a fresh install of windows xp with the a million pop-ups that it has to do oh my gosh shut up these freaking pop-ups okay so anyway um yes it, it does open up in a dedicated you know environment um so there is a bit of a uh, separation but let's see how this actually differs from i swear okay i know there's unused icons on my desktop because i just started using the thing that's why there's no used icons okay anyway um let's uh actually see how this differs from a standard Windows XP installation. Obviously, one thing right off the bat is that there is no Bliss wallpaper. That is now it might still be in here, but it's just a you know solid blue color. We go into the start menu here. Uh, this does also use, I believe, this is XP Professional. Um, we'll just run Winver here, and yes, this is Windows XP Professional. Um, so there you go. But yeah, it's very interesting that they don't ask you for like a product key or, or anything. I mean, you just you basically have to have a valid copy of Windows 7 and they just, I guess, give it give you Windows XP for free, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, but that's how they did it. Now you'll see that it does come with uh, some bundled network shares. So it's got the C drive, the E drive and the D drive and those correspond to the uh, three hard drives or the two hard drives um, and you know where these are just two separate partitions and the DVD drive so we could literally go on here and this works like any other network share I can just go ahead and browse my C drive and uh, you know tr you know try to launch a Windows 7 programs if I wanted to obviously it's not really gonna work very well but uh, you you have the option to literally browse your own files uh, you know from your host computer 
if you want to and if Windows Explorer is not going to crash here. We'll just go ahead and minimize that for now. Um, but you can see that uh, it looks like a pretty standard installation. You have all of your accessories, the games are here. Um, you have Internet Explorer, Windows Media Player, Windows Messenger, and Movie Maker. Okay, so I have tried a couple of different programs to actually install in uh, Windows XP mode here just to see how it integrates with Windows 7. Um, I've tried Full Tilt Pinball and uh, Microsoft Plus for XP, and both of them failed for some reason. The installers did not want to work. So we're actually going back a little bit. We're going to be trying out Microsoft Office 97. Now, Microsoft Office 97 is a program that you may be able to run natively in Windows 7, but we're going to be trying it through Windows XP mode just to see how that works. So as I mentioned before, um, all of your hard drives and optical drives and USB drives that you would normally be able to access from the file explorer uh, in Windows 7 here, uh, show up as a network share in XP mode. So we're going to go ahead and run the auto run application and we're going to install, let's just start off with Word 97. We'll just go ahead and install that and it's going to start the setup process for us. Okay, so we're going to install it in C program files, Microsoft Office, we're gonna hit okay. And we're just gonna go with a typical uh, you know, setup just you know, for video and uh, time sake here. And we're gonna hit continue and continue once again and it should uh, go ahead and, and install Microsoft Word for us here. Okay, so I did a little bit of more research and discovered that for the like uh, seamless integration feature to actually work where the XP applications will appear in the Windows 7 start menu, they have to actually be added to the C documents and settings all users start menu folder and Microsoft Word here was not. I even tried, you know, pinning it to the taskbar and, uh, you know, restarting the actual uh, virtual machine multiple times and it didn't actually do anything. You can see that I tried to move the Microsoft Word icon out of this office folder and into the regular start menu. Um, but it just doesn't really, it, it just doesn't work because it has to be in this folder, which is uh, where some applications will install a shortcut to automatically and some of them won't. And it looks like Office 97 is an application that doesn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to go to send to desktop, create shortcut. And then we're going to drag this shortcut into this start menu folder. And now what we should be able to do is uh, close out of this. We should be able to log off of the system. So we'll go ahead and press log off here and actually close out of it. And now what we can do is go into the start menu, all programs, Windows Virtual PC, and you see we have this new folder called Windows XP Mode Applications. And inside of that, we have Microsoft Word Windows XP Mode. So we're going to click that here, and it's going to basically launch the application uh, within the you know Windows XP Mode environment. So we're gonna see how that works here. And there we go. So you can see it's actually very, very cool because it literally opens up like as a Windows XP window here. So it's not in uh, the like enclosed virtual environment. It's literally in a separate window here. So you can use this like you would any other program. We can go to help and about and we can view the about um, information. We can type uh, a document here if we want to. And we can then save those documents. We'll go ahead and hit save as here. And if we want to, we can even save these to our regular hard drive using these network shares here. So I can go in here, I can go into users, 7VM uh, desktop, and I can then save this document to the desktop and it will appear right here on the desktop. And I wonder if we can open this file. Yes, we can actually open um, files using, like, you know, files you have saved on the desktop using Windows XP mode, you can just automatically open them. So it definitely works very well. It kind of reminds me of um, VMware Workstation has a feature called Unity, which is a very similar concept. It basically does the exact same thing, but it just works with, you know, VMware products as opposed to uh, Microsoft Virtual PC right here. But uh, there you have it, guys. That is a very, very brief demonstration of Windows XP mode working on Windows 7. And uh, yes, it does actually work in a virtual machine. I mean, I was running this thing on my Windows 10 host computer inside of a Windows 7 virtual machine, and we were able to get Windows XP mode to work, which is pretty cool. 
Um, but guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already uh, to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And be sure to drop me a comment down below letting me know your guys' thoughts on this video and if you have any video suggestions for uh, things that you want to see covered on this channel in the future, as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.